How we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we've wrapped up the 2019 football season here, finishing 11-3, and losing in the Fiesta Bowl, the national semifinal to Ohio State, but still winning the ACC and having a great season. So we're going to go through uh, a little bit of a recap of your Pitt Panthers we're going to talk about you know, what happened this season, how did we play, uh, who were the, the key performers for us this year, who have been the great performers for us throughout the course of their career, and then where do we go from here, what to expect as we go into the off season and prepare for our next season of Pitt Panthers football. So like I said, to start out with, we're going to take a look at the schedule and we're going to see you know really just how things went for us over the course of this season so if we look at the Pitt Panther schedule of course our opening contest ended up being against a team that was fantastic this year we didn't really know it at the time I think when we only won 14 to 3 we kind of looked at it like really really tough start to the season for us but it ended up being over a team that finished the year 12 and 2 not only were they 12 and 2 we held them to three points Ohio was one of the best offensive teams in the country this season. So fantastic job for us uh, to put up such a great performance against Ohio. You can see we won 14-3, to and we were down going into halftime. We hadn't even scored until the second half, and this was where Jay Keyes really burst onto the scene for us, a guy that we'll talk more about as the, the episode goes on here. But unbelievable season from him. He had two touchdowns, one rushing and one receiving in the game. Uh, it was a game that was really led by Patrick Jones on the defensive side of the football. He was incredible. That was the game he had three sacks. I think he forced three fumbles in the game, and we ended up recovering one of two of them by Wolfgang, who I don't think had any sacks in the – or he had one sack in the game. Uh, Keyshawn Camp had two. It was a good precursor to just how good we were going to be this season uh, defensively. And Paris Ford led the team in tackles, which – he ends up leading the tackles, spoiler alert, for the entire season. So a great game there to open up the season. The offense struggled a bit, but they got right on track in the next game where we played Tulane 34 to nothing over a Green Wave team that, again, was pretty solid. They finished 7-6. and six. They won their bowl game, but Trey Tipton caught a touchdown pass. Aaron Matthews, who unfortunately gets hurt in the next game, had a touchdown reception. Tipton had another deep one. Lease had a 27-yard run. It was an incredible day for us offensively. Pickett had a really, really solid game. AC Reese even got in there. Uh, we know how things didn't go as well for him when we had, when he had to come into a game against Duke, but we still got the win in that one. But it was a good, great team effort. Look at all the guys with rushing yards in that game. Uh, Matthews had five catches. It was a really great team day all around the field. Defensively, Dane Jackson with a big game there. I mean, it was a, it was a good all around performance by the team, and it was I think the first shutout that we had pitched in this entire dynasty through four seasons or three plus seasons at the time. I believe that was our first ever shutout that we had ever recorded, and we ended up recording a second one just a couple of weeks later. But in the interim, we did go to Penn State. Our final installment of our rivalry matchup with Penn State is that series is coming to a close. And we lost in triple overtime to the Nittany Lions. It was an incredible game. We actually ended up coming from behind, kicking a field goal as time expired to end up winning the football game, or excuse me, forcing overtime in the football game. We had a chance to win. We had a lead going into the fourth quarter. It was tied going into the fourth. We scored very early in the fourth quarter to take the lead. Penn State retied the game, then took a lead. We tied it. Teams traded field goals and overtime is a huge stop for us to, to even force a second overtime. Then they scored. Jay Keyes scored for us on a fourth down, I believe it was, 14 yards. It was fourth and 10 from the 14, and Pickett found Jay Keyes for an incredible touchdown. We then scored again in the third overtime, but we couldn't get the two-point conversion, and Penn State was able to, and that ended up losing the football game for us. But an incredible day. Kenny Pickett threw for 378 yards on 56 attempts. Oddly reminiscent of the Ohio State game, uh, I think I saw a comment in the uh, Ohio State you know, recap comments that said something similar, very reminiscent between the two in that Pickett had a great game through a ton of passes, ton of yards, but we ended up still losing the football game in overtime. This one just happened to be in triple overtime. Tommy Stevens had a great game for Penn State. He ran for 118 yards and passed for over 200. He was their player of the game. Kenny Pickett, of course, was sensational for us. Three touchdowns, 378 yards. The running game couldn't do anything, but Jay Keys had one of his signature breakout games. It's, it, it's, Again, almost eerily similar to the Ohio State game where he had, I think, 10 receptions for 165 yards. 
He has 11 receptions for 165 yards and a touchdown in this game. French, 8 for 38. I think in the Ohio State game, he had 8 for 42 or something like that. So it's crazy how that actually worked out to be really, really similar. It's kind of scaring me taking a look at that at this moment in time. But it was, it was a very good game. Paris Ford had a pick. Dane Jackson had a pick. It was a good game all around. Uh, it, but a tough loss for us, especially considering we had beaten them three straight times. So we do win three to one in the reinstallment of the rivalry series, but Penn state does get the last laugh in that particular instance. We then smoked a UCF team that ended up being very good. They won uh, the American conference this season. We're fantastic. They did have our old starting quarterback, Ben DiNucci, who had transferred there this season and he had a tough day at the office we did very well jazzy stalker returned a fumble to the house to score a touchdown paris ford had a pick six late on in the fourth quarter jay keys threw a touchdown pass so he had then at this point run for a touchdown caught a touchdown and thrown for a touchdown on the season i don't know if a pit player has ever accomplished that at least in the modern history of pit football incredible game all around we just dominated ucf and we had three different guys complete passes in this game which is pretty interesting pickett had a touchdown Keys had a touchdown. London had two touchdowns on the ground, so a big game for him. Keys even caught five passes. And defensively, you can see uh, we had Paris Ford had a pick six. Dane Jackson had a pick. Jazzy Stalker, we know, took a fumble to the house. So it's a big game for us there. And then this is a game that we really thought might have spoiled our season and was going to lead us on, on a bad path. But we lost to Louisville, and at the time, I think it made Louisville three and two, so they didn't look that bad. They end up finishing the year five and seven. This game was a heartbreaker because we had a lead. Sibley caught a touchdown pass. Uh, we did have a lead going into the fourth quarter, seventeen to ten. But then Louisville tied it with under a minute to play, and then a Kenny Pickett interception gave Louisville the ball right back, and they marched on the field and scored with seventeen seconds left, and that was all she wrote. It was just a horrific turn of events. Another one of those games where we couldn't get the rushing attack going and it really hindered our offense our offense did finally get some some things righted in the last couple games of the season but for the most part we really struggled moving the football up and down the field when our rushing game wasn't able to do anything because we had to rely on the pass so much and we became predictable and that's the biggest thing we want is we need Sibley and London to really progress for next season so that we don't become so predictable great game from Maurice French eight catches for 124 yards one of his biggest games on the season uh, Motley had an interception it was a good game all around we had a ton of sack Keyshawn Camp had a three sack performance which was very impressive in the loss against Wake then 34-17 big victory again against another team that I think overachieved 9-4 and four this season from Wake Kendall Hinton had a great year he was in the Heisman running we did have a ton of turnovers I think we had four turnovers in this game uh, three picks and a fumble if I remember correctly, so tough there. But we did force four turnovers as well, if I remember appropriately. Uh, we gave up a fumble recovery that put Wake back in the game very shortly, but then Todd Sibley with a big 69-yard touchdown run. Nice, his longest run of the season, I believe it was, uh, that really put the game out of reach. And this was a game where we finally got the rushing attack going, and we won going away. 253 yards on the ground. That helps make up for the fact that you turn the ball over so much. And when Wake... You know, gives up three fumbles as well on their own. Uh, that does help things out just a bit as well. But Pickett, probably his worst game of the season, you have to say, in this one. But Sibley had 150 yards on the ground. London had 112. Ran for almost nine yards or all, over nine yards of carry. Great game for us. Rushing the football and just incredible game on the defensive side of the ball. D Jason Jordan, he was a real breakout star. I don't know if anybody noticed him in a lot of the video, uh, you know, a lot of the games. Uh, I thought he was very good, the junior outside linebacker. He's he's rated a little bit lower than his counterpart, Barry Jenkins. They came in in the same recruiting class, but he's been an absolute stud for us. Jason Jordan has been very good. You can see fumble recoveries. Ford forced one and recovered one in this game, and the one I really remember was Jason Jordan absolutely blew up Cade Carney, their running back. That was the one that Ford recovered, and it was just an incredible, incredible uh, play for us in this game. So I thought the D was very good. Uh, we continued with another strong effort against Virginia Tech, 30-16. to DeMar Hamlin had a pick six in this game to open the scoring, and then we really just blew him out from there. Take a look at the scoring here. We won 30-16. to We had a 23 to nothing lead at one point. Keys had a touchdown. We put a bunch of field goals on the board. Pickett ended up with a touchdown run, and then Virginia Tech got a touchdown in garbage time. But another game where the rushing attack was just a bit more productive. We had four interceptions in this game, which was very impressive. Uh, really nice game. Uh, Jay Keys, 
five for 93 and a touchdown. I mean, those are he put together a Larry Fitzgerald type stat line season. It was a really incredible year uh, for Jay Keys. And then defensively, like I said, three interceptions for Demar Hamlin, including one he took back to the house. And Felipe Motley had an interception as well. Demar Hamlin's best game of the season, arguably his best game of of the career uh, and of his pick career as he is a senior this year and will be leaving us. Virginia was a tight game. One of the closest games we have is a really back and forth battle. We end up scoring the winning field goal in the fourth quarter when we shut them down finally offensively. Bryce Perkins had a fantastic game for Virginia. You can see he ran for a t two touchdowns. He also threw for one as well and they took a fumble back to the house. Kenny Pickett had a great game threw for three touchdowns in this one. Very solid performance from him um actually excuse me threw for four touchdowns in this one uh so really really impressive performance from kenny 26 for 37 324 touchdowns no interceptions so that might have been his best game passing the football for us this year and it had to be because we didn't run very well sibley averaged about three yards a carry london was under that jay keys was okay about four but another big game for keys seven for a hundred French 6 for 51. Lease, I remember, had that slant. He went for 81 yards, smoked Bryce Hall, who's going to be an uh, NFL football player next season. Really impressive there. I think that might have been Benjamin Ogden's first touchdown catch as well in that contest, so a great game there. Uh, really nice performance from the team, and we did just enough to shut down Virginia. We had a bye, and then we got to the area where we really struggled offensively for a couple of weeks here. Georgia Tech 20-14, to and this was a very hairy victory. We ended up coming away with the win. Pickett had a touchdown pass to French, and then Pickett had a touchdown run, so he did just enough for us to get the win, but our offense was pitiful. You can see, yardage-wise, 326 yards of total offense, but we did only give up 320. And this was a game where I think we had just some obscene number of sacks. Uh, yeah, Patrick Jones had three sacks. Amir Watts had four sacks. Sean Wolfgang had two sacks. Uh, Ronnie Baker had two sacks. Just a ridiculous stat line for the Panthers in that particular contest. Duke was a very similar one. The defense had to win this for us. This was the one that Paris Ford had a late interception in the fourth quarter, uh, and then we got the ball back after Kenny Pickett picked up an injury. A.C. Reese had to come in and finish the game uh, because Pickett had an ankle injury. Reese fumbled the ball, gave it back to Duke, and then Duke had an opportunity to win the game they went for it, or to tie the game, they went for it on fourth down. Paris Ford made a huge fourth down stop about a couple yards short of the, or no, on the other side of the first down marker, but he knocked the ball loose and it ended up being an incomplete pass and won the football game for us. So Paris Ford, another heroic effort as our offense stunk again, but our defense was so, so good. Only 94 passing yards against. Tough day for Pickett. Uh, and, and tough game for the rushing game. French had a nice day receiving, but defensively, Paris Ford had 10 tackles, uh, had a pick as well, and he did have that huge play uh, knocking away the football on the last play of the game. Keyshawn Camp also had three sacks in this game. Uh, Wolfgang had one, Watson was a great game there. North Carolina could have been a trap game away from home. We always struggle with them, but big win for the Panthers, 28-14. Another solid performance uh, from both Maurice French and Kenny Pickett. Pickett throws for two touchdowns. French runs for one. And this was a game C.J. London had a huge day in the second half running the football. This is where I thought he may have earned the starting position because he did really well in the second half. Ended up with 11 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but then he ended up struggling after that. So it was interesting how things went there. Keys and French again are solid one-two punch. Tipton had a nice ga uh, game as well. Uh, and we can see defensively just another Solid, if unspectacular, effort uh, from the defense. Mar Miami, huge game for the defense here. This was one that was just incredible. Jazzy Stalker and Paris Ford both had pick sixes in the fourth quarter as Miami tried to come back, and they had a garbage time touchdown. It was 38-13, to and they ended up scoring a touchdown with no time left on the clock. Jay Keys, 49-yard touchdown on a beautiful long ball from Kenny Pickett that was fantastic. French scored again. Those two guys were absolutely crucial for us down the stretch. It was a, just a good, solid performance. The offense really didn't do great, but the defense timely, timely plays. Three interceptions on the day, and you can see just how well that the defense played. Of course, like we mentioned, really came from uh, 
Paris Ford, Jazzy Stalker, and DeMar Hamlin each had an interception in this one. Jazzy Stalker was the one that really changed the game as Miami was driving, looking to cut into our lead. He caught it seven yards deep in the end zone and took it to the house. Paris Ford also had a sick interception uh, late on when he jumped the route and nobody was going to catch him. He went to the end zone. We then had the ACC championship game where we beat NC State. Maurice French had a touchdown in there for us uh, as CJ London had a, a rushing touchdown as well. Just a good battle between the two teams. It was very tight, you know. NC State made a bit hairy at the end as Jacoby Myers scored that touchdown run, but then we were able to run the clock out on them. It was a very just fun game to play. It was tough, hard fought. Um, both teams played very, very well. There wasn't a ton of, like, memorable individual plays from this game, I feel like, but it was one where each team just kind of tried to wear each other down. You can see Sibley and London both just solid performances rushing the football. J. Key's 7 for 125 was a great game, um, but he had that 62-yard reception, which was sweet, fighting through a couple of tackles. He also had another big one uh, in the Ohio State game as well, uh, so he became a master of the big play for us, uh, but no real ridiculous games. Uh, Maurice Collins gave up four sacks, though, which was just horrific, um, but a good game. Uh, Sean Wolfgang had two sacks for us to retake the sack lead, both in the country as well as on our individual team, and then we played Ohio State and this game, you know exactly what happened. It's just happened recently. We fell behind 17-0 after we had three turnovers in basically basically the first quarter, if you want to think of it, because the third one came on the first play of the second quarter, and they all led to Ohio State touchdowns. Right here, uh, we turned the ball over with an interception. They end up scoring, uh, on a touch, scoring a touchdown pass. Then we turned it over with a fumble from Maurice French. They scored on the next play on a triple option to K.J. Hill. We did catch back with a touchdown, but then Kenny Pickett threw an interception that Ben Johnson took to the house. They got a field goal then. Jay Keys had a 49-yard touchdown on a beautiful deep ball from Kenny Pickett that cut into the lead, and then Pickett with a gutsy rushing touchdown late in the second quarter to at least bring us back within six points. Ohio State you know, pushed their advantage a bit further out, but what a comeback. Colin Wells stepped in because London was hurt. Sibley was struggling. He scored his first career touchdown in the fourth quarter to cut into Ohio State's lead, and then we scored the game-tying touchdown with no time left on the clock and kick the extra point to tie the game. We could have won the game if we hadn't gone for two and would have just kicked the extra point in the fourth quarter, but we wanted to get the two-point conversion so in case Ohio State kicked a field goal on us, we would still be within eight points. You win some, you lose some in that regard, and unfortunately we lost it there because it went to overtime. We kicked a field goal, and then Ohio State scored a touchdown to win the game. And what really hurt was we shot ourselves in the foot. The three turnovers killed us. Ohio State had short field on all three of their touchdown drives in that first kind of period of the game. And that's why we killed them on total offense, but we ended up losing the football game or not winning the football game outright in the early going. Kenny Pickett, 327 yards on 57 attempts, two touchdowns, but the two interceptions very costly. Mari's French as well with a costly uh, fumble. Sibley ended up bouncing back and rushing for 57 yards. Colin Wells ended up, he had like two carries for 13 yards, and he finished with six carries for 13 yards. So not a great day for him. Um, Jay Keys. Heroic performance, 10 catches for 164 yards and a touchdown. Maurice French had eight catches for 42 yards and the game-tying touchdown. And Trey Tipton was unbelievable on that final drive. I think he had two or three catches on the final drive, including one on fourth down that helped keep the game alive. And we were four of five on fourth downs in this game, so it was incredible uh, of a performance. The defense as well played so, so well. Uh, Paris Ford led us in tackles one more time. Jacob Lachlan had an interception. I think it was his first career interception. So it was a great season all around and this is really the fun stuff i love seeing how the team did for the season being able to take a look at things uh we'll take a look at the team stats now for the season Pickett, of course was a, pretty much our primary quarterback ac reese played a couple of snaps jay keys played a couple of snaps from the wildcat position but Pickett played the majority of the season 23 touchdowns against 15 interceptions 500 pass attempts which we saw was second in the country uh and 3500 passing yards obviously huge uh jumps from last season i think his yards per attempt may have gone down just a little bit um but that was just the nature of how our offense was designed to run this year more touchdowns by five but also four more ints so we want to cut down on the ints going into this season but a good solid year for kenny he was sacked 38 times which is 14 times more than last year uh, obviously he had more dropbacks as well but we want to try and cut down on that for next year rushing is where we really need to improve the todd sibley was our team leader with 72 
uh, or 720 yards. Our team leader in rushing last year had like 1,400 yards, Quadri Olison, and Darren Hall had over 1,200 yards himself. Uh, so we had two guys run for like 2,500, 2,600 yards. Our two top running backs this year only ran for basically 100 yards a game combined between the two of them. So we really need improvements there. London, I thought, was a bit more explosive. You can see his yards per carry was a bit better. But Sibley has that power about him. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who's the star next year. Kenny actually led us in rushing touchdowns, which was interesting. Uh, good, solid season for Mr. Pickett there. And Jay Keyes was decent uh, in spot duty as well. We didn't get a lot of action out of the jet sweeps. You can see the receivers we did try run on the jet sweeps. Paul Lease, most successful but we just didn't run it that often because it wasn't that uh, that impressive for us. Our longest run of the season was Todd Sibley's 69-yard touchdown. You can see our yards per game average. Those need to come up uh, if we're going to have a successful season next year. We might have to start looking at running backs to try and uh, really improve uh, on the speed that we have at that position. Receiving-wise, our two stud receivers, Maurice French and Jay Keys, were our incredible one-two tandem. Jay Keys was a stud. Larry Fitzgerald-esque numbers. I, I looked this up. He had, for a freshman, the second most receptions all time uh, for a Pitt Panther freshman, only behind Tyler Boyd, who I think had 78 receptions his freshman year. Uh, and it was just an incredible year for Jay Keys. Uh, I think all time in Pitt history, his 76 receptions would be eighth. Eighth or ninth in terms of receptions a season, or no? I think French's would be eighth in terms of receptions a season. Jay Keys is like eleventh. Incredible year for the two of them. And Keys is only a freshman. Remember, uh, he's going to get absolutely better and better. French did lead us in touchdowns, but he was more of a possession receiver. Whereas Keys, he really did everything for us. It was an incredible year uh, to see what Jay Keys could do. Paul Leach was great in a slot role for us. He had that 81-yard touchdown, which was sweet, but we'd like to see with the speed he has him to be uh, more of a deep threat on occasion, but I think he'll probably assume the French role next year as our possession receiver. Jay Keys is going to continue just doing what he's doing, and our third target that I expect to be a big target on the outside is Benjamin Ogden. He's going to be our number three receiver next year, and he'll probably play uh, in three wide sets. We'll put Lee in the slot and Keys and Ogden will be on the outsides. Caleb Can I thought was a very good receiver as well. 14 catches in limited playtime as either the number two tight end or a lot of times I use him as the four receiver or the five receiver. I thought he was very good. I like him a lot and I want to get him in more wide sets. He's like a Gronk. Look at his size and he's a receiving tight end. I think he's going to be a big part of our offense next year. I was also impressed with Sibley's receiving out of the back. It was very good. Uh, Antonio Greer had a great improvement, which I thought was good to see. Uh, so really just it, more impressive seasons from all of these guys, uh, just owing to the fact that we passed so much more. It was tough to lose Aaron Matthews in the third game of the th season. I was expecting a breakout year from him. It's tough, but, you know, it gave us a better opportunity to develop guys like uh, like Jay Keys and things like that. So it worked out. Uh, our leader in pancakes on the season was Cameron Porter, 11 against 3. Great season for him. Uh, of course, a couple of receivers who we'll kind of ignore. Mar Michael Collins, I keep calling him Maurice. Michael Collins uh, had 8 pancakes against 11 sacks. So he was a good blocker uh, when he needed to be, but he needs to clean up his act to not give up so many sacks. Now, the issue is, of course, picket rolls to the right a lot. So I think that probably bumps up his numbers a bit, but not a great season. We will be losing Tony Pilato, eight pancakes against seven sacks, decent totals. Ryan Henry had seven against five, and John Cooper, our center, had three against three uh, in his first year starting. Henry, we can see, seven and five, his first year starting. Pilato, bit of a downgrade there. He gave up more sacks than last year, so we don't like seeing that. Collins, of course, his first year starting. Porter, his second year starting. Way more pancakes, so he did give up three sacks this year. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Defensively, what more can you say about Paris Ford? This guy's an absolute legend. Incredible season uh, for Paris Ford to lead us in tackles. Uh, had four interceptions, I think, on the season. Led, uh, led or was a second on the team in passes. Deflected. Forced a couple of fumbles. Recovered a couple of fumbles. Had two touchdowns. He won the Bednarik. He won the Thorpe. He's the best defender in college football. And he uh, odds on I would expect him to want to continue his his Pro, his football career at the next level after the success he's had. So if that's the case, what a way for him to go out. An incredible, incredible campaign for us. Celine Brightwell, senior middle linebacker, also had a very good year. Just real reliable is the one thing I can say about him. Jazzy Stalker, 
had a good season as well uh, as a senior starter. His first year as a starter, very impressive, to be honest. Scored a couple of touchdowns. Seemed to always be around to make a tackle, which was very good. Jason Jordan, he's, like I said, I think he was the breakout player of the defense this year for guys that we didn't expect to be good. Like, we knew Paris Ford was going to be good. Patrick Jones we expected to be good because he had that incredible offseason improvement, and he made, made good on his uh, ability. But I don't think... I expected that much about Jason Jordan. He was the lowest rated starter on our defense at 82. And he ended up being spectacular. Really, really quick. Really good in coverage. Uh, and I thought he was really good uh, throughout the course of this season. We've got a ton of players. Uh, unfortunately, you'll see a lot of upperclassmen when we look through the, the tacklers and things like that on this defense. So that's going to be tough to lose some of these upperclassmen. But uh, our leading tackles for loss, Patrick Jones, was incredible this season, even though he didn't. Because that's the thing. He had 22 tackles for loss, but only eight sacks, which means he made 14 tackles behind the line of, let's say, running backs or on screens, receivers, whatever it might have been. Sean Wolfgang was a big sack guy. 14 sacks, which, of course, led the country, led the team yet again. But – only four tackles for a loss otherwise. I want to see him be able to, to disrupt more plays um, that aren't just bringing down the quarterback. Obviously, I want him to keep bringing down the quarterback, but I'd like to see him develop into a player who can do more like a Patrick Jones uh, and make more of an impact there. But I think Wolfgang probably projects more as like a 3-4 outside linebacker at the professional level, uh, you know, an edge rusher, uh, than a down lineman. Uh, with the way he's kind of played. Like a like a TJ Watt type of player, I think, is what he can develop into. Very, very impressive season for him. Keyshawn Camp had a great senior season. Amir Watts had a great senior season. But look at the improvement of Patrick Jones here. First year as a starter, he wins the Lombardi as best defensive lineman uh, in the country. Sean Wolfgang, how he hasn't won a trophy yet is ridiculous. He has 33 sacks in his career. If he gets 16 sacks next season, he will catch um, Hugh Green – as the number one sacker in pit football history. That would just be ridiculous to be able to see him to do that, to catch an all-time pit legend in terms of total sacks. 49 career sacks would be a huge number to be able to do. Uh, if, if he could catch a legend like that, would be incredible. Um, Keyshawn Camp, great year. Three-year starter for us. Look at that, 20 sacks in his career. Incredibly consistent and really just went to another level this year four force fumbles as well which was very impressive in that regard amir watts huge step up this year nine sacks he only had five combined in his two years as a starter before that nine sacks this season we're really going to miss him Celine brightwell his third straight year starting at middle linebacker we're going to be losing so many guys that have played such a big role on this defense that's going to be a real killer for us to be honest how big of a regression does our defense take having to work in so many new starters? Uh, Jazzy Stalker, of course, we lose his first year as a starter. Was very, very impressive. I can't believe I didn't show this yet. Uh, we'll have to get to it. Um, Kaiser and Scott was great in the slot as well. Four sacks from the slot position. But Paris Ford, look at his stats. Three years as a starter. True junior. What an improvement this year was, but look how good he was overall. The one thing, he never had a sack, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but tackles for a loss went up every year. Tackles went up uh, this year. Four interceptions this season, two TDs, five pass deflections, forced two fumbles, recovered a fumble. I mean, what a year this guy had. Sacks-wise, you can see Wolfgang was our leader with 14, but we had all four of our defensive linemen had eight or more. That's why we led the country in sacks and were so good. Even our backup defensive linemen got into it. Ronnie Baker had five sacks. I think he had three last year as well, so great for him. Him. Artist Scott had a great season. Uh, Motley, as the the dime corner even, had 46 tackles out of the dime and two sacks. He had more tackles than Artist Scott, which is surprising, uh, but really impressive. Darren Toth, we need a big, big career uh, jump out of him. He's going to be a starter finally as a senior, and he should be a very good player for us. One of our top recruits from our first recruiting class in this dynasty. I'm expecting uh, big things out of him. Int leaders, DeMar Hamlin had six. What a career he's had. 17 sacks through his five seasons as part of the team. Five sacks as well. 200 tackles. Three touchdowns in his career. 18 passes defended. He's been an incredible player for us. Four-year starter. Uh, his first year he was, he was in the nickel for us. And then the four years after that he started at outside corner. Just a really, really good player and, and really impressed with what he accomplished for us uh, throughout his career. Dane Jackson as well, another year as a starter. Look at the consistency from him. 38, 39, 33, 38 tackles. 
what a year. He was a or dime corner that first year, two and a half sacks. Um, and then look at the numbers here. Consistency, two, four, three interceptions. Where he was really good, he didn't have as many interceptions, but defending passes. 21 career passes defended, which I think is better than what Hamlin was able to accomplish. He only had 18, but he had, a you know of course, the, the lead in interceptions there. So very impressive season. Stalker had three picks. Motley had a couple great years there. If we take a look at passes defended, Jackson led the way with six, then Ford, very good from our defensive players there. Jones led us in forced fumbles. Ford had a couple as well. Fumbles recovered. We ignore Maurice French because those are on the, the, the field goals that are too short that I return as if they're punts and take them out of bounds for touchbacks. Um, but we still had, I think, six fumbles recovered, seven fumbles recovered uh, other than that. The Motley one was my favorite one. That was on the punt that got muffed. He recovered that. For some reason, that didn't go down as a turnover. I'm not really sure why. Uh, but a great season for us. We didn't get any safeties, but we did get four defensive touchdowns, which was fantastic. Take a look at our kicker here, Jay Bump, one of the most reliable kickers in the country. A little bit of a down year for him, 21 to 25. He had missed three and two in the years prior, so he missed four this year. But they were all long ones, if I remember correctly, uh, was where he was a bit shakier. Actually, he missed two. From inside of 39 yards, surprising there, uh, and then one of three from 50 plus. But he did make his first career 50 yarder this year, which was good to see. And Eric Fox, okay year punting the football. His second year as a punter, his average is basically the same. His net was better though, which is good to see. So he's doing a better job pinning teams back. Because look at the punts inside the 20, jumped by eight. So I expect big things out of him next year. Maybe even be uh, in the competition for the guy award as the best punter. Now we didn't really have much of a return game this year. French 61 yards, but we didn't return many kicks. A lot of them were either in the end zone or I just didn't trust our return game. It just didn't seem to break anything big. So I just didn't really bother with it. French will be leaving, though, so we'll need a new kick return next year. Uh, Lachlan was okay when I gave him a couple of opportunities as the punt returner. So maybe we'll explore him because he's a pretty good, you know, in terms of a speed player. But we'll give plenty of guys the option next year. We've got a ton of really fast guys coming in this offseason that, you know, could make an impact in the return game. So let's take a look at the career stats uh, as we finish up the episode here. So looking at career stats, the one thing you want to ignore, um, Jalen Hills, he glitched for whatever reason because of the way that I transferred the players in the game. Remember I transferred Ben DiNucci? Well, I actually like literally transferred him to UCF manually. Um, and so for whatever reason, his player ID that he had with Pitt, I guess, must have got assigned to Jalen Hills. And so it left his old stats here. Um, so Jalen Hills doesn't have any defensive stats, but you can see DiNucci's old passing stats. Uh, in rushing stats, still got assigned to him for some reason. So just ignore Jalen Hills if he shows up on these. Uh, but Kenny Pickett now over 6,000 career passing yards. He's not going to catch um, the Pitt career leader in passing yards, which is Alex Van Pelt. He's over 11,000. But he could catch Dan Marino, uh, who's second with, I think, 8,700 yards, 8,900 yards, somewhere in there. If Pickett throws for 3,000 yards, he will catch Dan Marino and be second all-time in Pitt career yardage. Uh, Marino has the most touchdowns too. I don't think Pickett has a chance at catching him unless he throws for like, you know, 45 touchdowns in his senior year. Who knows? Kenny was very improved this year. I thought he was very good. I could see him as a dark horse uh, Heisman contender, to be honest. Same with Jay Keyes. Uh, interestingly enough, after Pickett's two years, he's our career leader in rushing still of players that are – no, he's not. London's passed him. Okay, so London has the most career yards rushing for us all time. Pickett leads us in touchdowns, but we need to see more out of our two runners going forward. Uh, Lease has done okay on the jet sweeps. Five yards of carry. We'll see if we can try and continue to mix them in. Like I said, because he's going to be playing in the French role next year, uh, he should have an opportunity to uh, you know get a few more of those because French had a couple of touchdowns uh, on sweeps and things like that this year. We'll continue to use Keys as a Wildcat quarterback and maybe throw him in the backfield on occasion just because he's so good everywhere and he's really hard to bring down. So I want to see him continue to have those opportunities. French. Goes out of his career, 142 career receptions. Of course, what a season he had in his final year, 82 receptions uh, in his final year, which is going to be an all-time you know, top 10 number for Pitt. Fantastic season for him. Uh, really impressive for Maurice French. Just a reliable player because he had 82 catches and only six drops. So pretty impressive there. I didn't actually notice that and look who led the team in drops this year. Um, it might have been French, but like when you're getting thrown to that many times. That'll be interesting to see. How many did Keys have? 76 catches 
Four drops. I mean, what an incredible talent this guy is at receiver. He's not going to be a quarterback any longer. I'll tell you guys that right now. But he finishes with 76 for the season. Aaron Matthews, of course, finishes career with 72 receptions. Trey Tipton, 64 receptions in his career as he'll graduate. He didn't even have a reception, incredibly, uh, in his sophomore season. He kind of lost his place uh, after having seven receptions and two touchdowns as a freshman. Nothing in 2014. 2015, he bounces back. In 2016, he has his best year ever, uh, four touchdowns, and I thought he was a very, very good player for us, so we will miss him. I hope to see Lee's continue to improve I think he's going to be a real key to our offense next season if he can take a leap forward and like I said I like Caleb Cannon I think he's going to be very good for us next season blocking wise we're going to lose Aaron Matthews on the edge incredible blocker uh, but I like Cameron Porter as potentially an all-american candidate next year I think he's going to be very very good for us uh, leading the offensive line but we will have to replace Pilato on the starting line otherwise we will have four returning starters there which is great defensively we have so many guys we're gonna to have to replace we'll sort by tackles here the tackling for whatever reason gets screwed up here when it goes over 100 you can see there when it passes uh, like 150 maybe is where it starts getting messed up yeah like 124 is good but when you get up here it's like 150 or whatever the counting gets all screwed up so you can see our leading tackler Celine Brightwell 256 uh, solo tackles in his career 264 total tackles great career for him but what's incredible is we could be losing all of these guys. Brightwell, Ford, potentially, if he decides to go to the NFL. Hamlin is gone. Jackson's gone. Stalker's gone. Motley's gone. Um, Amir Watts is going to be gone. Keyshawn Camp's going to be gone. Uh, Patrick Jones is going to be gone. So many big players that we're going to be losing. Tackles for loss, Brightwell. Wolfgang, 51 in his career and 33 sacks. Uh, like I said, he's creeping up towards that 49, which seemed to be an insurmountable number. Who knows? Maybe he'll be in for it. Let me know in the comments if should we have a sack watch for Wolfgang next year, a counter for every game or something like that. That'd be interesting to see. Hamlin leaves with 17 career interceptions. Jackson and Ford each had nine. Uh, who had the most uh, pass deflections? We saw that was Jackson. Forced fumble career leaders, Keyshawn Camp with four. Fumbles recovered, Hamlin and Wolfgang each had a couple. Uh, touchdown leaders, Paris Ford and DeMar Hamlin each leave Pitt. Like I said, Ford, I'm just expecting him to leave with the, with a season like that, best defender in college football, three-year starter already. I mean, realistically, he wouldn't be coming back. So I'm just anticipating he's as good as gone. Um, but incredible career, what he's done for us. Uh, and then we'll just look real quick. Kicking-wise, uh, Jay Bump, 86% career field goal percentage. I think the pit career record – Connor Lee was 50 for 60, I want to say, which is a little like 86% as well. It's like five out of five over six, which is 8.86.66666. So like Jay bumps right along, potentially being the best field goal kicker in pit history. Uh, Eric Fox, decent punter, not the best in pit history, but he's been decent so far for us. Um, we'll probably re we'll have to recruit a kicker next year because Jay bump will be a senior. French, he struggled this year on kick returns. His career average was pretty good. Interestingly enough, if we look here on kick returns career, yeah, the 2015 was very good. 42 returns, 32-yard average. He had a six-yard decrease this year. Never had a touchdown, though, which is a bit surprising. But we'll have to break somebody in next year and see what we can do. Artist Scott, you'll remember, was our punt return last year, and he was terrible. Uh, didn't have a ton of yardage. So uh, we'll see, you know, give plenty of other guys the option. So that's going to be it. I know it was a bit of a long episode, guys, but I love setting up you know, the, the future in this uh, career uh, and in this dynasty. It's so much fun. I love having you guys along for the ride and having your guys' input. We'll have, coming forward, we should have up next the coaching carousel uh, to see who's who moves around job-wise going forward. And then after the carousel, we'll get into players leaving. We'll see, you know, who we're going to be missing going to next year. We'll finish up recruiting. And then that's where we'll have the, the you know, the typical – uh, you guys can become a part of the, the dynasty, become a recruit, and then move forward towards getting into the next season. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let me know about the Wolfgang uh, sack counter, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hail to Pit. Take care. Bye-bye.